when bodybuilders and fitness athletes and even professional athletes, when they want to lose body fat, or in the case of a bodybuilder, when, it, when the bodybuilder is preparing for a contest, very, very commonly they switch their protein sources. For example, a lot of bodybuilders who will eat red meat in the off-season will, before a contest, especially in the last couple of weeks, they'll substitute either chicken, fish, or both and cut out red meat. Uh, today in this video, I want to discuss which is the superior protein source for losing body fat and maintaining muscle and getting your best possible shape, fish or chicken. Before, before I get into that, I want to discuss something that I consider a myth, and that is, that is this idea that you have to cut out red meat before a contest. Now, what is it about red meat that would cause a bodybuilder to eliminate it from his diet? Now, red meat, uh, depending on the cut, some forms of red meat are higher in fat. And, and, and being higher in fat, they're also higher in calories. So it can be considered a moderately high calorie food if you're eating fatty meat with the emphasis on the word fatty. Now, when I, I a couple of years ago, I, when I was writing for the bodybuilding magazines, I decided to do a survey of all the uh, Mr. Olympia the, the con contestants. This was in the 90s. I was doing a uh, survey of the top uh, com uh, competitors in the Mr. Olympia. This was during the 90s, during the reign of Doreen Yates. Doreen Yates, uh, as people who follow bodybuilding history know, won the Mr. Olympia six times. He created a, a new level of mass monster look. He was one of the first to display that appearance. Ever since then, you've had these really huge uh, competitors. Uh, you, uh, Dorian Yates can be considered the archetype or the prototype for the current huge physiques. Anyway, to make a long story shorter, uh, backstage I went up to uh, Dorian Yates, uh, this guy who was a judge. It's kind of a funny story. The guy who was, uh, he was actually one of the head judges. Dorian had his own separate dressing room away from the other guys who were, this is backstage, who were preparing to beat in the Mr. Olympia. So I walked into the private room where uh, Dorian was. Now remember, I was writing for uh, one of the major bodybuilding magazines, so I had access. Uh, I went, <laughs> I entered the room, and this this fucking lug, excuse my language, immediately steps in front of me and says, "Don't bother Dorian when he's getting ready to compete." And Dorian, who knew me, I had interviewed him several times before. He waved off the guy. Said, "It's all right, Jerry can come in." And I just looked at the guy, he's such a schmuck. But anyway, that's the kind of people I had to deal with back then, which is one of the reasons why I'm so happy I don't write for bodybuilding magazines. But that's another story. Anyway, I went, I went up to Dorian and I said, Dorian, uh, when, I, I assumed that he was like the other bodybuilders who basically deleted meat from their diet before for their pre-contest uh, training. So I said, I, the question I asked Dorian is, Dorian, uh, when do you eliminate uh, meat from your diet? And he looked at me with a quizzical look and he said, why would I eliminate meat? And I said, well, most of the other bodies will seem to eliminate red meat before a contest. So he said to me, what's wrong with red meat? And I really didn't have an answer for him. So I said, all right, so in other words, you're saying you eat meat right up to a contest, right up to the last week all the way in. He says, absolutely, there's nothing wrong with red meat. There's nothing in red meat that would prevent you from getting in top shape. This was Dorian Yates, as I said, when they Mr. Olympia six times. Uh, so anyway, uh, what is it? Again, the thing about red meat, ostensibly, I believe, you know, you have to understand something about bodybuilders. They have like a lemon, uh, a lemming, that's L-E-M-M-I-N-G, a lemming mentality. Lemmings are creatures that you know are famous when they uh, they they run in groups and when they jump off a cliff or one of them or two of them jump off a cliff, the rest follow. They don't question why they're all jumping off the cliff. They all jump off the cliff like one group think type of thing. Unfortunately, that's the way most bodybuilders are. They follow certain dietary practices, but they never question why. They just hear that this is the way it's supposed to be done. This explains why bodybuilders continue to this day i know you guys have watched any of my videos you know i've expounded on this before i'm just going to briefly say it again this idea of eating only egg whites and throwing out the yolks interestingly enough the reasoning behind eating only egg whites and tossing the yolk 
And by the way, the yolk has almost all the nutrients in an egg and half the protein is in the yolk. Uh, so they're only getting half the protein when they eat egg whites. And because they're throwing out half the amino acids, the balance of amino acids in egg white is not as good as that of whole egg. When they talk about whole egg being one of the best proteins, I mean, eggs being one of the best proteins, they're referring to whole egg, not egg whites. But that's another story. But there's a connection between eating only egg whites and cutting out red meat. Because if, if you ask a, a bodybuilder, well, let's say one of the more enlightened bodybuilders, I use the word in parenthesis, because just eating egg whites alone means you're not enlightened and you know nothing about nutrition. But anyway, if you ask them, why do you eat only egg whites? They'll say, well, uh, the, egg, uh, the egg yolk is, uh, has fat, and uh, the egg white is all pro pure protein. Okay, most of the fat and cholesterol is in the egg yolk, but so is all the nutrients, as I said earlier. Not only that, but the type of fat that predominates in egg yolks is very little saturated fat. That's the one type of fat you might want to be concerned with if you're eating large amounts of it. But most of the fat in egg yolk is what they call polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fat. What's the, what's the point? The point is monounsaturated fat, uh, that, that's the type of fat found in extra virgin olive oil and certain types of nuts. Monounsaturated fat, if you're active, it, it burns like a match. It's very unlikely to uh, either hinder body fat losses or produce body fat if you're active. Now, if you're not active because fat contains... Oh, oh, I bit my tongue. Ow. <laughs> That's what happens when you talk too much, talk too fast. But anyway, uh, if you, you know, since, since fat contains the dentist's source of calories at 9.5 per gram, if you're not active and you're eating any kind of high-fat source like virgin, extra virgin olive oil or something like that, there's a chance that you can gain body fat just from the sheer number of extra calories that fat provides. This does not apply if you're either active in sports or exercise. It does not apply. But bodybuilders, again, follow the leader. It's the same deal with red meat. Why do they cut out red meat? Because of its fat content and because of the idea that it contains a lot of calories. Here's where the lack of nutrition knowledge comes in, or should I say nutrition ignorance comes in, comes into play. Lean meat, certain cuts, such as round, sirloin, those type of cuts, the lean meat, uh, the fat content, if you look at analysis of very lean meat compared to fish, now most fish, uh, not all fish, fish contains fat, but most of it's omega-3 fat, I'll get to that in a minute, but if you compare the fat content between fish and very lean meat, it differs by, are you ready for this? About one or two grams. One or two grams. Not only that, but meat has more creatine monohydrate, and uh, the protein quality is about the same as fish. Uh, fish might have one advantage, which I'll talk about later, uh, but the point is that really there's no reason to cut out lean red meat. No, You don't want to eat fatty red meat, like, you know, chuck and these the cuts of fat. When I compete in contests, my pre-contest diet was literally meat and eggs, nothing else, and I ate whole eggs. When I, when I went to uh, buy meat, I would have the butcher remove all excess fat, and I ate only lean cuts like sirloin and round. I never, ate, I never ate the fatty cuts, and this meat was so lean that when I cooked it, there was no fat on the pan or, the, or wherever I cooked it, you know, like two drops of fat would come off. There was nothing left. It was literally almost pure protein. But anyway, that's another story. I, I really wanted to compare. Let's pu push aside meat. You know, it's a myth that you have to cut out. I just wanted to get out of the way. But let's talk about the two predominant sources of protein in pre-contest diets, which is fish and chicken. Which is superior to getting in shape? Well, it depends on the individual. It depends on A lot of it depends on personal taste. When I interviewed Lee Haney, who won the Mr. Olympia eight times, he's the, uh, the uh, record holder, along with Ronnie Coleman. Both of them have won Mr. Olympia eight times. I interviewed Lee Haney on his dietary practices, and I said to him, uh, uh, how much fish do you eat? <laughs> I'll never forget this. I said, Lee, how much fish do you, what, what type of fish do you eat, and how much do you eat prior to a contest? And he made a face. He says, fish? He says, I hate fish. I wouldn't touch fish. I said, where do you get your protein? He says, chicken. He ate chicken before a contest, skinless chicken. Uh, and so Lee Haney did not eat fish. However, contrast that with a more recent Mr. Olympia, 
uh, which is Phil Heath. I, I saw a video where Phil Heath was talking about his dietary practices pre-contest, and he, he showed him uh, it showed him cooking his own fish, a broiled fish. Uh, it was a very low-fat fish. I think it might have been tilapia. I don't remember exactly, but uh, he mentioned that he eats exclusively fish for the last four to six weeks before a contest. He he believes that it uh, it helps him. Uh, it makes him more. Uh, increases muscle definition, makes it easier to get in ripped up shape. But let's look at the, uh, let's. I guess the best way to determine which is superior, chicken or fish, would be to uh, to uh, look at the nutrient content. Like I said, both of them, fish and chicken, are ultra low fat. Both of them, uh, especially if you remove the uh, skin on the chicken, uh, you eat something like chicken breast, it's basically almost no fat at all. Uh, and the difference, again, between, let's say, eating skinless, skinless chicken breast and eating a, a fish is the, the, the difference in, in the amount of fat between the two is minuscule. It's like one to two grams. It really doesn't make a difference. So why would you eat fish at all? Well, if, you, if you're uh, conscious about nutritional factors, you might say fish has a little bit of an edge. Why the preformed, the, the, you have... Uh, uh, omega-3 fatty acids, one of them is considered essential. It's called alpha-linolenic acid or ALA. Uh, the reason that's considered essential is in your diet. However, ALA or alpha-linolenic acid is only a precursor. It's not the most active form of omega-3. The most active form of omega-3 fatty acids are eco-sapotenoic acid, and the other one is called dehoxysapatinoic, something like that. Can't even pronounce it, won't even try. Let's just call them EPA and DHA. Those are your active fatty acids. What's the best source of the active omega-3 fatty acids? What else? Uh, uh, mackerel. Uh, tuna is moderate. It's not that high. Uh, but, you know, the interesting thing is that when bodybuilders go on uh, fish diets for a contest, they try and eat the type of fish that's lowest in fat because it's also very low in calories, like tilapia, some of these other fish, but these fish are also happen to be low in omega-3 fatty acids. So there's no, advantage, there's no advantage whatsoever to eating the low-fat fish. Yet this is, the again, that follow the leader mentality. They listen to their coaches who they think know are well-versed in nutrition. And let me tell you, I've seen some of the diets put out by some of these so-called bodybuilding coaches and they're atrocious. These guys have no knowledge of nutrition whatsoever. I'm not saying all of them. I haven't looked at every guy's nutrition uh, pro program, but let me put it this way. The few I've looked at, I've looked at nutrition plans set up by bodybuilding coaches who work with pros. I've seen the diets they give to the uh, to the pro bodybuilders they work with, and there's nothing exceptional whatsoever about them. And when they list the supplements to use with the diet, their knowledge of supplements is abysmal. They know nothing about it. I mean nothing. But let's let's. What about the uh, macronutrient uh, content of fish? Let's say, for example, uh, one of the reasons why bodybuilders do like to go, you know, switch to fish when training for a contest is that it's extremely low in calories. A three ounce serving of uh, of cod, for, for example, contains only only 90 calories. That's nothing. 90 calories. Yeah, if, if you live on fish with that few calories, you are going to get shredded because you're taking in hardly any calories. You're continuing to train. Your body's going to live its, all, all off its own uh, fat stores. And by the time of the contest, you will be shredded if you can stand it. Now, you take a, a, a good source of omega-3 because of the uh, increased fat content, and it's good fat. It's omega-3. Omega-3 helps to build muscle especially if you're over 40, not so much when you're younger, but omega-3 does have an anti-inflammatory effect at, at all ages. And the less inflammation you have, the easier it is to build muscle because inflammation promotes muscle catabolism or breakdown. Uh, if you take a, a, a fish that's higher in omega-3, like sockeye, sockeye salmon, uh, you know now you're talking about a three-ounce serving having 200 calories. So that's over twice as many calories in fatty fish compared to lean fish. Now, uh, uh, the, uh, the three ounce serving of cod also has 20 grams of protein, which is considered ideal. 
20 to 30 grams maximizes muscle protein synthesis. Any more than that usually gets oxidized or used for other purposes. Uh, this this uh, three ounce serving a cup has, uh, ready for this, one gram of fat. That's, uh, that's like, that's, a, that's about as fat free as you can get. One gram of fat in a three ounce portion of, of, of cod, low fat codfish, no saturated fat at all. Now salmon has a little more protein, has 24 grams of protein with, uh, uh, and it comes with 10 grams of fat, all omega-3 fat, uh, except for two grams, which is saturated fat. So three ounces of a fatty fish like salmon will give you 1,500 milligrams of omega-3, uh, or 1.5 grams. Uh, the actual recommended daily amount of omega-3 fatty acids is between two and four grams. So you have even a small portion of a, of a fatty fish like, like salmon gives you half your d daily requirement of omega-3, which is fantastic. Now you look at cod, a low-fat fish, that contains less than 200 milligrams of omega-3 because, again, it's a low-fat fish. So cod is not a good source. You know, I mean, the reason why it contains one gram of fat, there's no omega-3 in there. Uh, so what about other nutrients? A three-ounce serving. Let's look at chicken. A three-ounce serving. Uh, now, the way bodybuilders usually eat chicken is they eat roasted skinless chicken breast. I should point out at this time, it, it depends on which parts of the chicken you eat. Dark meat chicken, the wings, the legs, that kind of stuff, that has much more fat than the white part of the chicken. Uh, the white part of the chicken is basically mostly protein. A three-ounce serving of roasted skinless chicken breast, uh, it has 165 calories, where if you look at the uh, skinless wings and thighs, uh, uh, a serving of skinless wings contains 203 calories, whereas the thighs contain 209, again, because of the higher fat, fat content. Breast meat, breast chicken offers the most protein. Uh, one chicken breast has 31 grams of protein, which is pretty damn good. As far as the fat goes, the, uh, the uh, amount in a three ounce uh, serving of roasted chicken breast, four grams of fat, only one of which is saturated. Uh, the other two cuts, the, the legs and the thighs, will give you 26 and 30 grams of protein with 8 and 11 grams of fat, 2 and, th two and 3 grams of which are saturated. So the chicken breast, in other words, has the lowest amount of fat and the most amount of protein. This is why bodybuilders eat chicken breast. Now, if we compare uh, chicken breast to, let's say, cod, which is a typical low-fat fish favored by competitive bodybuilders, now the, uh, the same uh, size serving three ounces of uh, chicken breast will give you four grams of fat versus one gram and the cod. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, isn't it obvious? It's best to, uh, to eat the cod. I mean, you're getting fewer calories. You're getting, uh, you're getting uh, what, uh, about 65, uh, you're getting 65 fewer calories and you're getting only one fourth as much fat, meaning one gram versus four grams. What? But the truth of the matter is that amount is inconsequential. 65 calories is not going to make any difference whatsoever in the rate of fat loss. None whatsoever. And as far as four grams of fat versus one, no, no, no effect. And considering that the four grams of fat is mostly uh, monounsaturated, it's not going to affect fat loss. Again, the, the fat in chicken, most of it's monounsaturated, which you burn up very fast. Only one gram is saturated, which is uh, less... Less, less likely to be burned rapidly, but one gram of, fat, of saturated fat is nothing. Okay, let's look at a vitamin comparison between fish and chicken. Both fish and chicken offer generous amounts of B-complex vitamins, which is great for protein assimilation, carbohydrate utilization, and help, again, helps turn your, you know, your calories into energy. Salmon is a little bit better in chicken and fish in terms of vitamin B12. Uh, a serving of salmon uh, which is three ounces, offers 179% of the daily value of B12. Roasted chicken, however, beats fish for niacin content, supplying 74% of the uh, daily uh, value, which is twice as much as fish. Niacin supports the health of your skin, nerves, and digestive system. Now, Sam, uh, one really good thing about, that, one advantage, if you want to call it, 
that uh, fish does have over chicken is it has more vitamin D. Uh, salmon especially uh, has almost half the daily requirement of vitamin D in a three ounce serving. Uh, that's still not really, you'd still have to eat a lot of salmon to bring your vitamin D levels up to optimum uh, uh, lab value, which is about between 50 and 60. Uh, however, eating salmon will, you know, uh, let's say a, a couple of times a week will probably prevent an outright vitamin D deficiency, but you'd have to eat it maybe three or four pounds a day to get your vitamin D level up. Vitamin D is very important for muscle. You have vitamin D receptors in muscle. It's very important. Uh, 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 as far as minerals go, a serving of fish or chicken gives you a small amount of calcium, iron, potassium, and magnesium. Magnesium is very important for protein assimilation, for energy, because magnesium interacts with ATP, which is the energy currency of cells. Sa uh, salmon is a really uh, good source of the trace mineral selenium, which is important. It protects your health, helps protect you against, uh, 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 against uh, uh, certain types of cancer. Uh, you can, uh, a, a, a three ounce serving of, uh, of uh, salmon provides 59% of the daily requirement for selenium. You never want to get too much selenium. If you get more than 300 micrograms of selenium a day, it'll kind of interfere with thyroid. So, you know, you, you can, it's best to get selenium mainly from food. Now, chicken, chicken breast does, isn't a slouch with selenium. Uh, chicken breast gives you 43% of the daily requirement, just a little bit less than fish. Uh, fish ha uh, has is higher in phosphorus, uh, which phosphorus is everywhere. It's really nothing to brag about. Uh, but what else? Uh, what, uh, the thing about uh, other new, other features of, uh, of of fish is that fish contains creatine monohydrate. It's one of the best natural sources. The best natural sources of creatine monohydrate. I'm sorry, not monohydrate. That's the supplement form of natural creatine. The best sources of natural creatine are meat and fish, red meat and fish. Uh, fish, as a matter of fact, sardines, I, I believe it's sardines, either sardines or anchovies, I forget, are the number one source of natural creatine. They actually have more than red meat. Also, you have, uh, uh, there's other nutrients that are in fish. For example, there's an amino acid that's really, fish really uh, is high in fish, called taurine. Taurine is not an essential amino acid, but it's involved in muscle metabolism. It helps you to sleep, uh, and it also helps regulate the metabolism of other minerals, uh, of minerals such as calcium, magnesium, and helps your heart function. It's very important, and, and fish is one of the best sources of taurine. Uh, uh, fish also, uh, they did a uh, animal study with rats, and they noticed that they compared, they gave fish protein versus casein. Casein is the primary milk protein. Found, there's two milk pro, ma, ma, primary milk proteins, casein and whey. 80% of, of milk protein is casein. So they gave these rats either casein or fish protein, and they noticed that while the protein effect was about the same, the, the uh, rodents that had the fish protein lost a little bit more fat, uh, and uh, they, they traced this, uh, the, because of the unique, let's say, uh, combination of amino acids in fish, uh, you have a beneficial effect on what's called the intestinal microbiome. The intestinal microbiome is the collection of bacteria, fungi, and other organisms that reside in the large intestinal colon. They discovered that, uh, that the uh, fish protein favors the uh, proliferation of beneficial bacteria, especially bacteria that produce what they call short-chain fatty acids, such as butyrate. Uh, the the short-chain fatty acids, there's three primary ones, butyrate, propionic acid, and acetate. Butyrate especially has tremendous health effects. It actually has anti-catabolic effects, helps uh, prevent muscle breakdown, and it's also very good for the brain. And in the uh, colon, it helps to prevent, uh, it, it, it prevents precancerous tumors from turning into full-blown cancer. So that's another advantage of fish. It seems to have a really good effect on the, uh, on the intestinal microbiome. On the other hand, on the other hand, fish, I don't know if any of you people have heard of what they call TMAO, trimethylene oxide. It's, um, TMAO is a metabolite 
of the nutrients carnitine and choline. And some studies have associated TMO with increased risk for atherosclerosis, diabetes, and many other diseases. TMO is produced in the intestinal bacteria and the liver from the dietary precursors, as I said, carnitine or choline. Now, uh, a lot of scientists have written articles warning people not to eat red meat because it contains high amounts of, of, of uh, carnitine. And they said the carnitine will be converted into TMO, and they think that the TMO produced from red meat, or should I say car the carnitine of red meat, is the, is the reason why red meat might increase the risk of cardiovascular disease rather than the saturated fat which has been thought to be the main cause of, of, uh, of a cardiovascular disease. They now think it's TMAO. There's not a lot of evidence for that. But here's the interesting thing. Many studies, many studies have shown that fish, especially fatty fish because of the omega-3, has a, has a huge preventative effect, preventive effect against cardiovascular disease very, very uh, uh, pro uh, They say that eating fish two to three times a week helps prevent both heart attacks and strokes. Fish contain 66 times more TMO naturally. It's in the fish already naturally than red meat. So if what the scientists are saying is true about how toxic TMAO is, people who eat fish should be all dropping dead of heart attacks and strokes. Obviously, <laughs> my theory and the theory of more rational scientists is that the good uh, uh, aspects of fish, such as the taurine content, uh, such as the uh, lack of, of saturated fat, uh, and so, uh, the omega-3, the rich omega-3 content, offsets the TMAO content of fish and it kind of neutralizes it. So, Let's kind of uh, uh, another thing to consider about fish is that certain types of fish uh, you guys have probably heard, for example, tuna fish, certain uh, types of tuna fish can contain mercury, fairly high levels of mercury, which is a neurotoxin. Uh, and you know, you want to avoid eating certain types of larger species of fish like shark and swordfish, but uh, it's okay to eat other types of fish as far like salmon, cod, and other whitefish two to three times a week. Uh, and when you eat chicken, it's always good to you know, eat skinless chicken. Don't eat the skin because uh, you know, if, you t if you take the skin off chicken, the fat profile and the calorie profile of skinless chicken is very, very close to low-fat fish. It's almost the same. So if we drew a line under this, what could we say? His, what, I, what I believe, based on the nutritional profiles, is whether you uh, opt to eat chicken or fish is a personal choice. doesn't make any difference. Fish has, as I mentioned in the video, a couple of nutritional advantages. But, like, for, like for example, if you, uh, if you don't want to eat fish, you can easily take a fish oil supplement and get all the, fish, all the omega-3 you need. You can also, if, you know, if you're worried about vitamin D, you can take a little tiny vitamin D capsule and you're covered for vitamin D. Uh, uh, you know, you can take uh, a, a magnesium supplement. There's nothing really special about fish.